Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And today we're going to take a look at this page here. This is actually the funnelbuilder.com page built by ClickFunnels. And I'm in the certification program right now. And they had Jake Leslie on the call. He's the head funnel designer over at ClickFunnels. And he was talking about this page in particular. He was talking about his story about how, how he got to be working for ClickFunnels and a bunch of other stuff. And he, he made a comment and it just made me say to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shoot a video. Well, first off, I'm going to do a hack on this page. Then I'm going to shoot a video and show Jake what I did and how he can, can fix the problem on here. So I'll start off with showing you what the problem is on the page. So what's going to happen here is we are going to pull this down. And as we pull it down, look over here in the bottom right-hand corner. I got a little bug down here. It'll show up over the top of Made with ClickFunnels. And I got a little bug over here that when this thing gets to 1,400 pixels, they actually have a breakpoint set in there for some reason. I don't really know why that is. But here we are at 1,401. We go to 1,400, and it does that. That's because of this breakpoint they had in there, plus a lot of other things. Because obviously, you see this, the picture just gets tiny. And everything on the left-hand side shifts, the valuable skill breaks, the two buttons go to two separate lines. And immediately I saw that, I was just like, whoa, what are you, what, what's going on with this? And of course, as we continue to size it down, the now the image is going to start shrinking as well. And everything gets uh, pretty bad right here. We're at 1,024, which is a, a, the size of an iPad. And again, those are really the two sizes I kind of look at is like, you know, 1400, you know, 1300, 1200 in that range, and then 1024 for an iPad. And of course, as you get even smaller down into a mobile device in landscape mode where you're going to have eight, 900 or so pixels on the width in there, it starts get, getting really wonky. So I built out my version of it. So let's take a look at that. So here's my version. It's, it's slightly different. I didn't push the image quite as far to the right as they did. My spacing's off a little bit, even though I did use the proper fonts. But another thing they have here is they have the the login this top line up here again if you watch this and we get down to before we even get to 1400 you see the word login goes right off the screen so we're at 1600 here and login goes right off the screen and so that's not good so then once you get to 1400 then it all pops back in together so those are a couple things that i wanted to make sure i addressed in my fix and so i just brought this in so here we just have your standard column, 1100 or column your standard width on your container inner of 1170 pixels. That's what's set inside of ClickFunnels if you don't change it. So that's what I set up here for, well, actually for all of this is where it's at. And then with this image, this is actually a background image on this row. So it's a single column row with a background image on it. Whereas what they had over here is a two column row. And this is just an image floating around inside of that second column in that two column row. So mine is totally built different, but watch as we size down. And again, check the bug in the lower corner here. So let's see, we are at 1600 here. And now we are at 1500. Well, not quite. I'll get there. So there's 1504 right there. So, so far you haven't seen anything change on mine, except you do notice that the image is moving closer to the right hand side because what I did with this as a background image, I actually pushed it 150 pixels to the right, actually pushed it outside of the column itself and pushed it to, um, um, 150 off the side here. So again, we're just going to keep coming down. And now we are at 1400 right here. So nothing's broke yet. But the guy starts to go off the screen a little bit, which is exactly what I wanted, because I want to be able to obviously keep the focus on the words. And of course, there's a reason why the girl's in the middle and the guy isn't because who wants to look at some guy? Uh, everybody wants to look at the pretty girl. So we're just going to keep moving over further and further. Now, see right here as we get to this point, check out the text right here. The text is going to start to change because what I'm doing is dynamically based upon the viewport width, I'm changing 
the width of this element right here. Plus, you're also going to notice the same things going on up here uh, with valuable skill. But in that case, I'm not changing the width of the element. I'm actually changing the font size based upon the uh, based upon the width of the viewport. So we're just going to keep going. The guy's uh, computer is slowly going off the side of the screen over there. And now you're going to watch here. We get a little bit of a break here because the word online goes down to the next line. So here we are at 1190 and now we're at 1187. It broke down to the next line. Exactly what I wanted it to do because you're going to see here this girl is going to slowly mo move into the text area. The buttons are going to move down a little bit, and then they're going to come over the bottom of her laptop, which, again, is perfectly fine for this application. And so we're just going to keep moving over. And let's see here. So now we're uh, right here is about 1,100, and we're just going to keep going. And you notice the image stopped moving. Up until this point here, the image continues to move, but then it stops. So it stops so that both of them are still on the screen and we're just going to keep moving over further and further. So let's just keep going and you're going to see here the text uh, in the paragraph block there. It just, you know, flipped down a little bit more again and it should do it again here in a little bit. So here we are at 1024. This is what it would look like on an iPad. So I think that's looking really good on an iPad at this point. And we can just keep going down because everything's going to keep resizing itself. And if you notice here, check out the text size. It has gone down. Okay, well, I won't let him click out. Okay, so it keeps, um, it keeps getting smaller. Now, I could have the other text sizes also resize, but I don't think it's necessary um, because you want to be able to read the words, obviously. So we're just going to keep going down further and further. I mean, so we're down here to 855 pixels, and I think it looks really good. Now with this text here, because it's going to start getting over the laptop, I put a black shadow around it so that it would stick out proud. You could even, you could even put a, a, a you know, bigger shadow behind it. You could put um, uh, even, even a black, um, black background on the text itself, even though I think that would look kind of funny because it's going to be like square, square edges that are going to kind of change as you're moving it around. And so we're just going to keep going down to the point where the 770 breakpoint, which is standard in click funnels, you just get to the point now where the text is starting to overtake her face. So obviously you would want it to switch at that point, but for 99% of the people who are ever going to see this, they're not going to really see it in the, you know, 1,000 to 770 range anyway. So you always want to check, like I said, at, you know, 1,300, 1,400, and 1,024 for the rare iPad user, which I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, except on airplanes. That's like the only place I ever see people using iPads. And now that I think about it, actually, that's still normally just laptops. So I don't know what the penetration is of iPads anymore. You just don't see them that much. But I think it looks uh, absolutely fantastic there. So at this point here, who wants to see the code? Because I'm going to lay it all bare and show you all the code that I use to do this. And I'll tell you right now, there ain't a line of JavaScript in here. So let's come in and let's take a look at our CSS. Cause like I said, there's no JavaScript and all this from here up. This is just all of the different fonts because in order to make it look right, I wanted it to at least have the right fonts in there so that everything came out properly. So now let's take a look at what we have and my CSS, I don't think is in the best order. I have to move a few things around on my screen here, get that out of the way and move this up and we'll broaden this down a little bit. Okay, so now we can see all the CSS on the screen that we need to see. And this, uh, is this all of it? Yes, it is, okay. So the first thing I have here is I have this text paragraph. Now, the text paragraph is the paragraph right here. So we have our text paragraph first. So that is this paragraph here. And all I'm saying on there is I want a width on this thing. And you're going to see something you've probably never seen before. It's not very common, but I've been using it a lot more lately because I'm really kind of getting obsessed with how things look 
at different viewport widths. I want them to be very consistent no matter what width on the viewport the item is. And so it's known as a clamp. And what it does is it basically combines together a minimum width and a maximum width on an object. And then it also says in the middle there, the 40 VW, that says you want it to be 40% of the viewport width. So you saw the bug in the bottom right hand corner. That's telling us what the viewport width is. And so as we make that go down, if we get down to a thousand, it will make that element 400 pixels wide. But I'm saying there we want a minimum of 300 pixels and a maximum of 550 pixels. So it'll always stay inside of that range. So it's a great little tool to use when building stuff like this. So let me see here. Oh, then I put that text shadow on there. That's all that this is right here on the headline part of the element. And then for this image up here, I didn't want it changing in size as we change the viewport width. And you're going to see here as we get smaller and smaller, normally an image is going to want to change in size. So all I said was don't change in size. So I just said here simply uh, minimum width of 165 pixels, which is what it was set to in the editor to begin with. I do believe, let's just make sure. Yeah, it was set at 165 and I said, that's its minimum width. Don't ever let this thing get shrunk down just because we're changing the viewport width on it. And then let me see here, we have the row, row 27. 806. And in this case here, I didn't use any data titles or anything because I'm just whipping this together as a quick example. Normally, if I'm building it for production, every element that I am somehow um, being, being used as a selector inside a CSS or JavaScript, I almost always give it a data title. But so we got 27806. Yep. Okay. So that is this row right here. And I'm saying we need that to be a position of relative and the reason why we need that is because we have an element inside of it then that we're going to give the position of absolute. So in order to give something a position of absolute, you have to give its parent element the position of relative so that the, so the row is relative and then the other thing can be positioned somewhere absolutely inside of it. I'm going to say exactly, I want this image right here inside of this bigger outside element. And that's the next bit of code right here then is we say here our row, we want to go to the before pseudo element. Now a pseudo element is not actually part of the DOM. So it does not go into the flow of the DOM. And so therefore you can take that element and you can move it anywhere you want on the screen. Now you can move any element anywhere you want on the screen, but it especially works good for pseudo elements because they're not in the flow of the DOM in the first place. So if you move them out of the flow, it doesn't affect anything around it because as far as the HTML is concerned, it's not there anyway. So we're, we're just going to do that. And so what we did then is we said, we're gonna take this image and we're going to make that the background image and here's the URL for it. And then you always have to put in here content of something because I think these pseudo elements were originally kind of built in order to put like some text onto something that normally would not have been there. So you always got to say content. Now I could put some text into here. In fact, let's see what happens if I type something in. Is it going to show up somewhere on the screen? Okay, I'm not seeing it. But normally, well, in this case here, because we're putting in an image, we're not going to put in any kind of a text. And then we're just going to say, okay, we want this pseudo element to be 100% of the width and 100% of the height of its parent element, which is the row. And the only reason you have to do that is because otherwise it will not have any size. It, it natively has no size. It doesn't exist really on the page, but yet it's still on the page. And then we say we want it to be absolutely positioned. And then we say we want it at the top. So it's going to be at the top of the row, but we want it right 150, negative 150 pixels. So if you say we want it right, and my hand's going to go in the exact opposite direction of what it should be. But if you say right of 50 pixels, you're going to go to the right edge of the document and then, or right edge of this row in this case here, 
and then you're going to come back in 50 pixels if you say write 50 pixels. But if we say write negative 150 pixels, it'll actually push it outside of the row. So it's going to go 150 pixels outside of the row, and that's what we did here. So if I turn off the negative sign on here, you're going to see them scoot way over to the left because it's pushing it in 150 pixels from the right edge. If we put the negative in, it is pushing it out 150 pixels past the right edge of the row. And then the background size here, 767 pixels. That's what I determined was like the maximum size on the original. If you made that as big as you could, it was 767 pixels. And then we're going to keep it at that size the entire time. The 767 is set. It won't change the entire time. It won't be allowed to size down. Just like this image up here, we set that. And so therefore, it could not size down either. And then we don't want it to repeat. And we want that again at the right and the top. If we again do our background positioning and we say we want this center, then it's going to, let me see. Uh, so there's going to be right there in the center. We could make it left. We could make it whatever we would like. And we're going to go right. And in case you're wondering, I'm talking about positioning here. I'm talking about background images here, height, width, top, right, all these things, all the training, the extensive training on exactly how to do this is all right inside of the funnel code training itself. And then we got our temp headline of, um, so this is the blue headline we're talking about right here now. And we're saying here font size. Now, up here where we did our clamp, we we're talking about the width of the paragraph element. Down here for this headline, we we're talking about the font size of this element. And again, we're saying here we want the clamp and we want a minimum of 25 pixels on our font size and a maximum of 65 pixels on our font size. And we want that font size to always be 5.5% of the viewport width. So again, if the viewport width is a thousand pixels, five and a half percent of that would be 55 pixels. So at a thousand, it will be exactly 55 pixels. And actually I can show that to you right now. Let's just, uh, let's turn on the inspector first. And so we're going to see down here at 13, 16. You're also going to see the same bug in the upper right-hand corner now. So let's move this over until we get to 1,000 pixels in width or something very close to it. And let's see. Oh, I couldn't get any closer than perfect. Okay, so now let's take a look at this element. Here we have it. We're going to come down here. Font size is 55 pixels right there. And so let's make this all big again, come in here. And so then the last thing we have to do is, um, let me see here, row three, one, background color, background. Okay, that's just, uh, that was just this down here at the bottom, this other row down here. And I just wanted to put that in there so it looked, you know, kind of similar to what they had here. I wasn't going to build out the whole page. I just wanted it to look pretty close to it. So that is it. That is all of the code. It really isn't that much. We're on line 64. We started on line 30. So basically we got 30 lines of CSS code to make what I think is a massive improvement over the original. Again, the original, as you saw, broke really bad here at 1400. Then the image started to get really small and stuff. And mine, I think, is a pretty cool way to resolve that and keep it looking virtually the same on all um, viewport sizes. So that is it for today. If you got any questions, just let me know.